Hi guys, it's Ray here from Man City Fan TV. Now most of you know I don't swear in any of these videos, but I want to apologise up front just in case I use any choice language today, uh, because today's subject matter is uh, journalist criticism of Manchester City fans uh, about the Matthew Hedges case. Now, if you've not been following what's been going on in the world recently, uh, I want to give you some brief background about Matthew Hedges. Now, he's a postgraduate student from Durham University. I think he's about 30 or 31 years old. And he's been out doing some research work in the Middle East. Uh, he's been out in uh, the United Arab Emirates. Now, he was arrested over there and accused of spying. Last week, he was uh, sentenced to life imprisonment. And uh, there's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes. A lot of uh, journalists have been criticising City fans. And actually, today, uh, Matthew Hedges uh, apparently has been pardoned uh, over in uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, apparently is going to be released. But I want to get go through some of the things that have been going on in the last few days since he was sentenced and there's been a lot of shit stirring um, in the media and some of those shit stirrers, I'll have to read their names off because there's quite a few of them and uh, it's probably not limited to just these. You've got Duncan Castles, our old mate Duncan Castles. Uh, looks like Marina Hyde has joined the party. Matthew Syed. Simon Hattonstone, Barney Roney, Sam Wallace, Ian Herbert. You've got Piers Morgan throwing his oar in. Stan Collymore as well. Lovely Stan Collymore. And uh, Ewan McKenna. Now, I'm sure there's more, uh, but those are just uh, some that I uh, quickly wrote down today. And to give you an example, you've got uh, people like Ian Herbert. And if you, I don't read Ian Herbert. I'd rather uh, his comments and his, his articles. To be honest, I'd rather be washing my hair. Uh, what's left of it. And so... Ian Herbert, his article, his uh, report of the, the match between uh, West Ham and City at the London Stadium, where City won quite handsomely 4-0, I think uh, most of his article um, appeared to be, uh, at least the introduction, was all about nothing to do with football. It was to do about Abu Dhabi and City and, and, and things that have got nothing to do with football. So there's, I don't know, what is it, you know why he's got an agenda, but it seems to be a, an agenda driven article uh, criticizing City. So we've had a, quite a few articles um, over the weekend criticizing City fans for not uh, apparently taking a stand and, and for saying nothing about uh, Matthew Hedges and um, the war in Yemen where Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia I believe are involved. Uh, I mean they're getting the weapons from, uh, from the West, you know, from, I'm, I'm gonna guess some of the big uh, weapons um, Manufacturers and exporters will be coming from the US, the UK, France. I'm not sure exactly who's involved, but that's where they tend to get their weapons from and, and possibly Russia as well. Um, but there's a lot going on out in the Middle East and a lot going on around, around the world. And so for journalists to start criticising City fans uh, for not speaking out about Matthew Hedges and for not uh, having to go at our, our, our owners, so to speak. And I've got to ask the question, what can City fans actually do? Do you want us to start boycotting games? You know, even though we've been a supporter through thick and thin, like myself, for about 45 years, do you want me to start boycotting games? You've got other fans whose fathers, grandfathers have supported the club for nigh on 100 years. Do you want them to stop supporting the club? Do you want us to hold, have banners at games denouncing our owners? Do you want us to have chance criticising owners or sh shouting, uh, you know, free Matty Hedges? even though he has just been freed, but do you want us to be doing all that sort of stuff? What difference do you think it's going to make? Do you think our small voices are going to make a difference to our owners sitting in Abu Dhabi? I really don't think so. There's precious little we can do as City fans, but some of these journalists, they seem to have a weird agenda. Some of them want to blame City fans, uh, apparently for all the ills of the world, and they want us to condemn our owners. Don't they realise we're into football and not politics on a global scale? They rely on what few people have uh, written on Twitter and, uh, and other social media as their basis. Of, that's their research to know what the, the majority of City fans actually think. Well, I actually interview City fans and I've asked them questions. And they, you know, if they actually did it themselves and actually got uh, comments and opinions from people face to face, they'd find out it might not be the same as people uh, you know, hiding behind a computer on Twitter or Facebook. But let's switch it around for a minute. Where are these journalists condemning their own colleagues, their own publications, their, their newspapers, for reporting on the Formula One Grand Prix that's just taken place this weekend in Abu Dhabi? 
where is the condemnation of people like Lewis Hamilton and all the other uh, drivers and all the teams that were present and all the broadcasters that were over there in Abu Dhabi broadcasting in the UK and, and all around the world? Where is the con condemnation of Will Smith for apparently going there? Where is their full condemnation of their colleagues who go to attend matches at uh, Etihad Stadium, the home of Manchester City, and accept their free hospitality? Those journalists will probably claim that uh, they're going there just to report on sport. They're going to Abu Dhabi just to report on the, on the Formula 1 Grand Prix. They're going to the Etihad Stadium just to report on the football and that we shouldn't mix politics with sport. By the same token, we fans just want to watch the bloody football. Why don't you save us your hypocrisy while some of you are writing for your distasteful owners and publications? Some of you say it's possible not to agree with everything your owner does and says, but still work for them. But you say City fans should be going further and criticising their uh, owners openly. Start by looking into the mirror first and criticise your colleagues and owners for what they do. Hardly any journalists have spoken out against their colleagues harassing Raheem Sterling for the last two or three years. Ashley Cole seems to think it's got something to do with racism. Many of us have believed so for years. Yet there's an eerie silence from, uh, from most journalists. Why aren't they commenting about this? Why aren't they criticising their colleagues for this, um, this agenda, this vilification, this chasing of Raheem Sterling? There are article and article and article. You know, it's been going on for, what, at least a couple of years. Ridiculous articles criticising him. Yet I've not seen stuff from journalists openly criticising their colleagues for what they're writing. Journalists are happy to use Twitter as a social media platform. Uh, despite the billions invested by Saudi Arabia in the past, a regime they claim to despise and, and they, they openly criticise. Journalists are happy to fly with a, a Boeing aircraft or an Airbus aircraft, despite their close partnerships with uh, Abu Dhabi, a regime that some of them are telling us that we should, as uh, football fans, be condemning. The world can be a horrible place sometimes, and it is difficult to escape the tangled web of who owns what when we try and go about our daily lives. But you journalists cannot try and hold ordinary football fans to a higher standard of moral behaviour than you would hold yourselves to. Look in the mirror and sort yourselves out first. I'll invite Marina Hyde or any of the other journalists who've been criticising City fans um, to meet Man City Fan TV this Saturday at the Etihad Stadium for the game against Bournemouth where we can have a proper debate and discussion on camera. I'll even provide a free ticket to the match for the first one that takes me up on this. Let's see who has the gumption to give it a go. Or are they all just trolls and keyboard warriors?